Since the Industrial Revolution, contamination in the form of industry byproducts and man-made chemicals have been entering our environment, our forests, our cities, our beaches, and our harbors, where they have been causing ecological stress to both terrestrial and aquatic habitats. One notorious pollutant is polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAH. This pollutant can reach disastrous concentrations in the environment from the burning of fossil fuels like gasoline and particularly coal. It can also come from tar balls originating from petroleum spills. Another hazardous pollutant is polychlorinated biphenyls, or PCBs, which can come from old paint, electric transformers, and old waste. This phenol A is an abundantly present chemical that can mimic hormonal processes in humans and fish. It is commonly associated with plastic and plastic residues. Until recently, it has been challenging to measure the concentration of such contaminants, at least in a way that has environmental significance. However, a new technology has emerged for measuring these contaminants using simple strips of plastic. Det ser till synnot ut som helt vanlig plastik, men är ett av forskarnas viktigaste verktyg för att driva miljöövervakning i norska fjorder. It is called passive sampling. So what is so special about passive sampling? Well, to summarize, passive sampling makes measuring really dissolved contaminants possible. Okay. And what do I mean by freely dissolved? Well, let's take a look into how contaminants spread in water. Imagine that you're somewhere below the surface of the water, and there's been a contamination spill. So we have some kind of contamination problem. Well, what are all those contaminant molecules doing? We have to consider the other things that are down there. For one thing, there are a lot of particles, or sediments. These sediments can be in the water column floating, but mostly they're lying on the seabed. So what happens then? The contaminants undergo a process called partitioning or sorption. Some contaminants will stick or sorb to the sediments. The rest will remain freely dissolved in the water. We refer to these free swimming or free floating contaminants as freely dissolved and the contaminants that are stuck to the sediments as particles sorbed. What does this mean for aquatic life? What about the fish, the worms, all the creatures that make up the marine ecosystem? For instance, what about this amphipod here? It turns out that it is a freely dissolved water concentration that exhibits the highest exposure rate and the higher toxicity, particularly to organisms that are low in the food chain, like our friend the amphipod here. On the other hand, the sediment absorbed concentration exhibits lower availability and lower toxicity, which is mostly attributable to kinetic limitations. I mean, the stuff is stuck in the sediment. For this reason, environmental chemists say that the freely dissolved concentration is related to bioavailability. And this is where passive samplers come in. Passive samplers or the thin strips of plastic shown earlier, act as a proxy for the low food chain aquatic organism. The passive samplers take up exclusively freely dissolved water molecules, which is similar to what those low food chain aquatic organisms do. Traditional methods are not often able to measure the freely dissolved concentration of contaminants like pHs, but with passive sampling, it's possible. One of the most practical aspects of passive sampling is that it can be easily integrated into a variety of monitoring programs and technologies. Here's Solvay in Oslo Harbor attaching a passive sampler to a buoy used to measure turbidity. And uh, here's Christian in the Dramensfjord lowering a suspended particle trap. He attached some passive samplers to it. This way, we can monitor freely dissolved and particle sorbed contaminants at the same time. But not only with environmental monitoring, but research possibilities with passive samplers are endless, as demonstrated, for instance, by these recent NGI papers. So, where can you use passive sampling? Oh, yeah.
You can use pasta sampling here. And here. Or you can use pasta sampling in Minneapolis. Why not? And why not in Chicago? You can use passive sampling in Switzerland. Or here in Gdansk. And even here in the swamps of Texas, passive sampling is alligator proof. Passive sampling works here.